Hello and welcome. My name is Manuel Quintana with Pragmatic Works. And here in today's video, we're going to have a small conversation, which is pretty sarcastic because the topic of today is a big one, right? But we're going to try to keep it as a kind of general overview. I got to get into some specifics. It has to be done. And it's in that world of data modeling. What's interesting is this is a topic that I see coming more and more to the forefront, even in the more introductory classes for Power BI. Things like dashboards in a day, which are meant to be that kind of first exposure to users to understand what the tool is about. The conversation of modeling even presents itself at that point, because as we are growing, as more data is coming in, as the requirements for data literacy are increasing, understanding data modeling does help the Power BI user in knowing exactly the efficiency, some of the performance tuning, and you can have some better conversations with the IT individuals who are supporting that solution. So knowing and understanding this, because some of you are very much just bringing in your own sources, your own Excel files, your own information, maybe non-IT managed items, knowing what Power BI craves, what that kind of gold standard is for what Power BI wants as far as the model inside of our Power BI reports is critical. And that's what we're going to look at. We're going to focus on this architecture known as Star Schema. And more importantly, in the demonstration, we're going to talk about how do we create dimension tables? Because quite often, and this is probably going to be very familiar for most of us, I've done this, it's very easy to connect to an output. You output an Excel file, it's got everything you need, right? One row, let's say it's a sales table, you've got who purchased it, what, what was purchased, when was it purchased, you know, maybe the method of how it was purchased. Like, there's so many different attributes and so many columns that are describing this. And we're talking about in plain text. Manuel Quintana bought it. He bought this, you know, pogo stick, and it was for this amount, and he bought it, you know, in Melbourne, Florida. That's where he's from. Like, all of these different things, all of these descriptive attributes, which are critical, and we need but from a storage perspective, it's not very efficient and it ends up not being very scalable. So we take this approach of creating an architecture using a design, a blueprint known as a star schema to create these tables that will house the various different entities that we need, which will eventually what it ends up doing is reducing the redundancy in our model and it makes things far more efficient and scalable, right? Now it might not sound that way. Moving from one table to let's say five or six, how is that better? It is the way that the tabular model works. It's how it makes things just communicate and filter just so efficiently. So we are going to want to go this route. You're going to want to check this out. Like I said, there are additional blogs, lots of stuff out there around this topic now. As I mentioned, it's becoming very popular. We're just going to kind of get some key terms out of the way, understandings of the basics, and hopefully that'll get you started on this journey on moving towards, you know, focusing on how do I need to be modeling my Power BI reports. All right. So first off, modeling. What is a data model? We're merely talking about and specifically modeling. It's a term that, you know, this is for relational, relational databases. This is for Power BI. This is in tabular analysis. I mean, it's, this is a, a concept that is prevalent in many different services and technologies. I'm going to hone it in and focus on Power BI. So we're talking about basically importing data into the Power BI model, which is there and available. I mean, bringing it into the actual local Power BI data model. This is quite often known as a semantic layer where we choose, you know, the tables, we choose the relationships, we can change it. Basically, this is the business layer where after we've brought it in from, let's say, SQL Server, we brought it in from Excel, we can do whatever we want with it, right? We understand our business needs, we understand how these relationships exist, and we create them. So the model effectively represents the tables, the relationships, and the columns that exist inside of the Power BI report itself. And this is that breakdown, logical versus physical, right? The physical model is what really exists out there, right? You have a SQL Server database, Data modeling has been done there. There's referential integrity in place, primary keys, foreign keys, all that fun stuff over in Excel. There's not the most traditional way of doing those relationships, uh, but still something exists there physically. Here, we're in the logical model. I brought the stuff from Excel. I brought the stuff from SQL Server, and I can choose how I'm going to relate them, where in the physical realm, they are not related, right? We just know it from a business perspective. So that is really just generally what are we talking about when we say model. And the model itself is going to have various different designs or architectures, and it's referred to as a schema. And the schema that we're going to be focusing on is the star schema. There is also kind of a branch out from this, we'll see in a moment, but that star schema, you can see a little image on the right. It's one of the simplest styles um, of this. It's been around for decades as well, but the idea is it contains really two types of tables. And you, there's varying different forms of these that go even further, but we're going to talk about fact tables and dimension tables with a focus on the dimension because that's what our example is going to be about. So we have these items in the center, that lightest blue one, that's our fact table and all around it resides our dimensional tables. And we're going to break down 
what each of these means. What do we mean by a fact table? What do we mean by a, a dimension? In a moment. Now the star aspect comes from the relative loose kind of shape that we have here with that central table and all the other ones around it having relationships to it. But also in certain circumstances, we might need to create dimension tables from dimensions. And when we talk about what dimensions are, when we talk about the process of denormalization versus normalization, this will make much more sense. But a snowfl snowflake schema, when you hear this, is really just an extension of a star schema, where usually you have the fact table in the middle, and you're having then, once again, these dimensions outside of it. Maybe you go ahead and you normalize the fact table and you branch that out even more. The end goal there, just once again, to reduce redundancy, which will give an overall better efficiency to your model, right? Generally, when you do this, they're representing hierarchies. So you might have something like sales orders and sales order details or products and segments. Like there could be many different things here that could represent this, but we'll see how we're gonna identify it in the example we're gonna be going through and then how we're gonna actually create that branched out dimension. How do we end up bringing it all together to take advantage of this new idea to make things more efficient, right? So the idea is let's go ahead and let's store some very nice, clean, smaller integer values within our tables rather than, and have those be the repeated values rather than just this longer text chain that's in there, right? That's gonna make things much more efficient. So as we talked about, facts and dimensions. So we start with the fact table, and this is really why you're creating the report. It's gonna be the table that houses that aggregate or that met metric value that you're looking to show. Sales, units, cost, transactions. Look at the example right here in the middle where I have units, right? That is what we're talking about is the fact table that lives in that middle. And then all around it, surrounding it, are going to be our dimensions. You can see here some um you know measures so the items inside of our fact table the units the sales whatever it is are usually sliceable and they're sliceable by things like month and customer and that is what our dimensions are these are tables that contain descriptive attributes that we're going to want to filter our metric data by i'm measuring my sales how do i want to see my sales i want to see it by the customer i want to see it by the date i want to see it by what product was purchased right all of these different things the who what where when and why that really is the description of what is contained in a dimension table. Now, what we talked about is sometimes you'll bring in an Excel spreadsheet and you'll have all that information in a single table. So why not just use that? There are going to be some limitations on scalability and efficiency when you use this. This is known as a denormalized table, right? And there's going to be limitations and the idea is to look to move away from that. Yes, you've got all the information there. All we're going to do is we're going to take those descriptive attributes and move it into its own table. Imagine you have a fact table that's a million records long and in there you list out the customer name of who's purchased it. There's probably going to be quite a bit of duplication and that customer name is going to be in that text format so you can read it, you know, who the customer is. Well, that's going to take up a ton of space in the model, right? Text values versus numeric, there's going to be an intrinsic, you know, obviously a difference in the amount of space it takes up. More efficient would be that numeric option. So what we do is we say, okay, Yes, I've got my, you, this sales table tracks my sales, every one of them. We need that. That's critical. That's what this table is about. But instead, let's have a customer ID. Instead of having Manuel Quintana, Mitchell Pearson, all these names just repeat over and over, I'm going to store their ID, ID2, ID5. So in that million row table, that column is now so much more efficient. And instead of having a million rows here, we have a customer table. And maybe that one is only 5,000 or 10,000 rows. It's a unique list of my customers, I have their ID, and I create a relationship over to that table. So yes, that central fact table still has all of the details that I want. That This line is for customer 24. And if I wanna know from a visualization perspective, which is gonna be very common, I don't wanna show customer ID, I wanna show the full name, it's gonna be in this dimensional table. Quite often in Power BI, the dimensional tables are going to hold the fields that you're going to put in your slicers, your axes, your legends. They're going to be the way that you're going to slice up that data. And in that dimension, you have all of the attributes related to the entity. If it's customer, yeah, first full name, sure. What about married? Yes or no? Gender, uh, you know, age, birth date, all of these potential things will be housed in here and you would have access to it via relationships. So, yes, we have facts, we have dimensions. And we need to bring them together with relationships. That is a key piece. This is what actually allows our tables to communicate to each other. This is what allows filtering to occur. And there are three kinds of relationships readily available to us within Power BI. We have our one-to-many, one-to-one, 
and many to many. And quite common and often when you go from a tr for a traditional star schema, you have your one to many relationship with the fact table being the many side of those relationships to the dimensions. World's not always perfect and doesn't always fit in that perfect round circle. So sometimes you will have to work with more complex uh, relationships such as many to many. In this video, we won't be kind of traversing into that realm. So really quick, what's normalization? That's what we're gonna be doing here. This is where you're basically creating more tables and relationships that have fewer columns. We talked about having that big, flat, wide Excel table that has everything you need in one table, right? So what we would do is we would take on a process of normalization and break out the, you know, the necessary elements into their corresponding dimension tables. That would be the process of normalization, which reduces redundancy. We talked about the customer name, repeated so many times, when the customer table, the customer shows up once. Significant reduction in redundancy, right? So this is gonna be extremely efficient for us for disk space, optimizing, speed of reading and writing. This is key. Denormalization goes the other way. This is where we have fewer tables, and sometimes just the one table, and we have a ton more columns and or records. This is going to increase the degree of redundancy, not just obviously for a customer table, for the product name column, for the customer name column. Just imagine all the potential things that are going to be in there, and it's just going to be repeated over and over, right? Because in some way, we need to have the customer name, we need to have the product name, and since we only have the one table, that's what's going to have to be used. So denormalization takes up way more disk space because of that degree of redundancy and due to the nature, quite often, of the columns that are being used here, right? So we want to kind of move away from denormalization, which is a very common process. So hopefully that makes sense. Just a quick visit down this lane of what are models, star schema, which we are focusing on, and the idea of facts and dimensions. Let's go ahead and look at the Power BI report that I have here and break down what's going on. So we can see here, if I go and visit over into my model view, I have got a model here, which simply has a sales table. We have this product dimension. As you can see, I do have a date dimension. Um, and if you ever need to, just in case, you can always hit the fit to screen, and this makes it easy to find out exactly what's going on in here. So there are some relationships here that are missing, and that's okay because um, that's for a different video. Bringing this all together, we can see we have like this geography table, we have this whole city, state, and all this fun stuff that actually relates to a customer table, which we'll be covering later. In my case, I'm actually gonna go ahead and create a relationship here from date to date. But what we're gonna be interested in what we're going to be focused on for right now is going to be this table right here, product dimension. But before we dive into it, let me explain what's going on. Imagine this table. Let's kind of recreate this and go back in time of what this table could have looked like, the sales table. So I'm going to go to the data view. If we go to the data view, we can see here we have a product ID, which is just a number. We have a customer ID. We have a campaign ID, right? And what we're measuring is the number of units. So in this transaction, on this day, we sold this product to this customer in, during this campaign, and it was one unit, right? We're recording each transaction. Well, in a more denormalized model, what would have happened is this would have given me the product name, maybe even, even more, maybe the product description. Basically, everything that we have in this product dimension table, that potentially could have been in the root table, in the main fact table, in the one big flattened table. And look at all of this, right? There's a lot potentially repetition. Now in this case, product ID is unique, which means there's only gonna be one representation of each product name, but we also already see there's some issues here. Look at this. Look at the redundancy right here. This is what we're gonna tackle. We're actually gonna branch out a dimension from our product table to create a category segment dimension table because there's a ton of redundancy. Why not just say, hey, product ID one, Maximus UC 42, it's part of category segment one. That's it. We can literally eliminate both of these columns and have it represented by a single ID. But obviously when we go and look, we don't have a table like that. We need to create it. So the logic that we're gonna use inside of this dimension table to create effectively this snowflake dimension, this is what you would do from the very beginning as well. When you have that large central fact table and you need to figure out what are our dimensions, that's what you're doing. You're breaking it out and creating these items. So let's go ahead and create. Let's reduce the redundancy. Let's take a process of normalization to create a new dimension, which would have a relationship to product dimension, but that's gonna allow us still to filter any of our sales information. 
because we'll be able to filter from our new dimension into product dimension, and then that will carry on towards sales. You can always tell because of the directionality of these filter arrows, and the ones can always filter the many side of the relationship. So let's start off and create our dimensions. So to begin, what we're going to be doing in just in case, I'm going to go visit my um, in the home ribbon. I'm going to go over here into my transform data, right? I'm just going to go into the Power Query Editor side. We know we're focused here on product dimension here. And the idea is I want to create a category segment dimension. So it's going to basically have a unique combination of category and segments, all the available options. We're going to create a unique identifier for, identifier for that. And then we're going to need to replace that. We need to restructure this table so it takes advantage of that more efficient relationship that we can define. So not rural productivity, right? Not seeing these options right here. Instead, I'm just making an arbitrary number. I don't know what's going to be assigned the ID just yet. But instead, we just have one column that would say one. And that means it's part of the rural productivity category segment. It's going to be that easy. So first is first. Let's take advantage. All we, everything we need is actually right here in this table, but it's only found in two columns, category and segment. So I'm going to make my life easy. I'm going to right click the product dimension table and duplicate this. This is what you would do. I would go ahead and say, you know what? I only need the two columns, so I pick category and segment, and we just go ahead and say remove other columns. And then what we can do is go ahead and uh, highlight both of them, and we're going to go ahead and hit remove duplicates. We now have created a table that has a unique list of those combinations of category and segment, right? So this is obviously still the same. This is still just text values. You know, technically we could create like. If we combine them, we could combine the other, but we want to get away from using these tech values. We want to get to a more efficient means of identifying this and a more efficient means for being able to create the relationship. And quite common is using a numeric representation to have an ID value. So it has, serves no business value per se. It's more for just creating a unique identifier. And the nice way place is we can do that right here in Power BI. If we go over to the add column ribbon, we can see that there is an option to add an index column. And if I hit the little arrow next to it, I can say from one. And this literally says start from one, right? You can, if you're unaccustomed to reading M, it's saying start from one and increment by one. And you can adjust these values if you see fit, but there it is, all taken care of, right? And obviously the name a little bit lacking. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this category segments ID, just like that. And you know what? I think I'm gonna go ahead and just move this to the front so it's in there. I always like to have my IDs in there. And naturally, the name of our table, not that great. So let's go ahead and double click that. And we're going to call it category segment dimension, All right? Just like this. So we now have a table technically that falls into the constraints of what a dimension would want to look like. I have some descriptive attributes for it and I have a nice, clean, unique identifier. But how can I create a relationship or basically make it so in the products table, I no longer have category and segment instead. I want a new column, right? That just has the category segment ID and it needs to match up with what I have now. Well, the way we're gonna be doing that, the way we're gonna update our product dimension table is by using actually the merge queries operation. So right here with product dimension selected, I'm gonna go ahead and in the home ribbon, locate the merge queries operation. And I'm gonna merge this with my newly defined dimension, category segment dim, right? Cat seg dim. And we can't really use the uh, you know, ID yet, it doesn't exist, but we could go here and select category and segment and category and segment and say, hey, this is what we want to do. We want to go ahead and where you find a match, where you find a match for rural productivity, which happens to be that first row, right? Go ahead and we're going to bring back the category ID for it. So this will bring in the whole purpose of merging is to add columns from one table to another. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to add the category segment ID from this new dimension to the product dimension. And that'll allow us to just get rid of category and segment as a whole. Those two text columns gone, replaced by a single numeric column. Way more efficient. So the last thing, without going too deep into the merge, there are some cool things here. We are going to use a left outer join, which basically tells us I want to keep my product dimension intact. I want to make sure all of my products are there. Let's only bring back matching records from the category segment dimension. Any 
category and segment combinations in which we don't find matches, the ID would technically be null, but in this case, that's going to be impossible. We created this new dimension, cat seg dim, from product dimension. So we own, we base, we have a table that contains all of the potential combinations of category and segment. So we aren't going to have any items, any rows that don't have matches. That's going to be great. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. We can see now in the product dimension that we have this new kind of packed column. It has a table inside of it. If you've not seen this, you can always, anytime you see this like yellow font, this little text, you can highlight the box itself and you can see down below what's contained in there. So in this cell, we have three columns. It's the matched value that we found from the dimension table, cat seg dim. So we just choose which columns do we now want to add to the product dimension. And this one's pretty easy, right? If we hit this expand option, we don't need category. We don't need segment. It's already right here. So we don't need those two items, right? So I'm going to uncheck it, uncheck it. And for the sake of making naming convention easy, I'm just going to uncheck use original column name as prefix. And I'm going to hit OK. And we now will see we have a product, a category segment ID. Literally, Maximus RP-01, that product is part of the category segment of one. So that means I don't need to have category segment, category, or segment gone. Just get it out of here. Now, technically also in this scenario, but it doesn't matter if you look the manufacturer ID, this is actually redundant data. It's the same for both. If you have information that's the same for both, you can choose to maintain or keep it. But clearly, this is product information for one manufacturer and one manufacturer only. Those would probably represent columns I'd probably eliminate as well. We don't need them. Now we have, and I can move this over here. We have these various items, right? Product ID. If I want to bring back the information, I can, but the one thing is we have yet to actually create a relationship between these two, right? Meaning I need to go ahead and hit close and apply, right? Now that I've restructured the product table, that I've got that all set up so that it's going to be, you know, has an ID rather than the other item. When I hit close and apply though, Power BI does a pretty swell job in locating and realizing, see our new tables all the way over here because it sees the same name column, segment ID, segment ID, compatible data types, it automatically created the relationship, right? So if I want to have a breakdown of my units by category or by segment, I'm going to be able to do it. And our product table is now so much more significantly maintained. We don't have those two text columns for the 200. It's only a 212 row table. So obviously not a monstrophic impact. But still, imagine this on, from a scalable perspective. Two text columns versus a nice, clean, singular numeric column. The amount of space that's going to be consumed here is vastly different. So this is us basically taking a process of normalization, branching out a dimension from one, so this would fall under snowflaking, so we could reduce the redundancy in our product table, right? 212 versus how many rows did we have in our new dimension? 10, all right? These text values show up 10 times versus 212 times. Just, I mean, once again, if you think about this from a scale perspective, that's a massive difference. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Like I said, not the shortest video, but definitely not the longest when, it talk, when we want to talk about modeling. But hopefully it gave you a good idea of what we mean when we talk about star schema, what are facts and dimensions, and a very small, quick approach of, Hey, I looked at a table, I recognize there's a degree of redundancy here, and I can create a hierarchy, right? Products fall under a specific category and segment, but I can create a category and segment dimension. This is us going from dimension to dimension, but you also, if you have that big flattened out table, you might be doing this from your fact table, creating your initial dimensions as well. This is a common practice that's happening right now, and really something you should be looking forward if you've not been using a star schema. It's going to be great for scalability, and it's really what Power BI craves. So I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.